Hi everyone, so in this tutorial, let's allow the user to sign in with Google. So once he press on this button, we need to allow him to sign in with his Gmail account. So uh, let's get started. And in order to implement our code, we need to make sure of two different things. The first one, we need to check if it is activated from the Firebase authentication tab. We already, we already activated, so here it is. And if it's not, as I said before, you press on add provider and make sure that it's being activated from here. The second one is we need uh, that we need to go to the pubs back to TML file and then we search for Google Auth. And uh, we need to download in here a new package. So it didn't appear. We can search, for example, for Google sign in. And here it is. Now, as usual, I strongly recommend you to read the documentation. For example, for the iOS, you need to do something, but I will not cover it in this course. But it will be easy for you to follow the instruction written in here. Let's go to the installing tab, copy this one, and then come back to the pub spec to TML file and paste your dependency here save your file and as usual cut the process and run the application again okay and now in the meantime let's go to the google button widget which is in this file and in here we can start implementing our method so what I'm gonna do is to initialize a new method in here, then we can use it later on. It will be of type future, of course, but future void. And then uh, I will name it Google sign n like this. And it will be a future, as I said, so let's add a sync QR directly. And now we need to initialize the Google sign n package. So let's initialize a final called Google sign n you can name it whatever you want of course and it will be Google sign n so uh, let's make sure of these suggestions here it is and the package is being imported automatically here it is okay now we can use this Google sign n to start the sign n process so let's initialize in here let's say final I will name it uh, Google account, let's say, and uh, let's uh, use the variable above and say dot sign n in here to initialize the sign n process. And uh, this sign n method is actually a future, so let's make sure and await it like this because later on the variables will be also depending on it. Now, in the debug console, I didn't get any error and the process is done. So this is perfect. Okay, now we need to check if this Google account is null or not. So if it's not null, we need to do the check. But if it's null, we don't have to do anything. So uh, let's do a check about it now. So check if this Google account is not equal to null, then we do the work. So let's initialize here a try catch block. And of course, we can uh, catch the Firebase exceptions. So let's say on Firebase exceptions catch error like this. And then we catch the normal errors. Uh, oops, it should be only catch error like this. And then we can show a spinner or we can just keep it like this. So let's say finally, and then we need to do something else. So uh, let's initialize a boolean here. So uh, let's say bool and is loading equal to false. And this one should be like this. And now it's not const here anymore, so get rid of it. And now let's start writing our code in this try block. 
So, for this try block, we need to do just like we did for the registration and uh, the login. So, uh, in here, I, I got an error because I add this const here, so let's get rid of it. And uh, for this sign in method, we already used the auth instance and call this method to it in order to sign in. We will do something very similar now in order to allow the user to log in with his Gmail. Okay, so in the try block, let's await and call the auth instance and say dot sign in and something called with credentials so this one and now we need to provide the credentials so uh, in our case the credentials will be the access token and the id token so what can we do about this is to check about these two different items and make sure or uh, arguments and make sure that it's uh, different than null so what i'm gonna do is to cut all of these and now do another if statement in here and uh, we need to access now the access token and id token and this access token and id token we need to get it from a different variable so i will initialize it in here and i will name it google auth and it will be equal to the google account dot authentication like this and this one is a future so let's await it now in this if statement we can access this auth but firstly I will paste my code here and now let's access this auth here and access the ID token and the access token so for the access token let's make sure that it's different than null and for the ID token let's make sure also that it is different than null so uh, it should be the Google auth and uh, access the ID token and again make sure that it is different than null perfect so in this way we will avoid any errors now this method we need to pass in the credential to it so we can call now the Google auth provider and this Google auth provider we need to pass in two different parameters to it and of course we need to call the credentials and now for this credential we need to pass in the access token and the ID token so this is why I made this a check about it to make sure that we have the access token and we have the ID token to avoid any errors now how can we get it of course we have it here so for the ID token we pass it like this and for the access token we can pass it by copying it from here like this now add the same column here and it should be like this and of course as usual when it's done let's uh, navigate to the bottom bar screen so for that let's go to the login screen and we can directly copy this method so uh, let's copy it and go back to the Google button here and navigate like this and I don't have the context so uh, we can pass it directly here like this and now this Google sign in method can be used somewhere uh, of course we will use it here so uh, let's just do it like this and pass in the context to it like that now this boolean is not really required or you can keep it and uh, instead of this material we can show a spinner or we can manage it in a different way in order to show the loading manager but it is fine since when the user press on it it will show him some kind of dialogue or contrast and it will be available for him to, to see it so so it's fine later on when I test it it will be clear enough for you now when you when you need to test your Google auth account you need to make sure that you added the SHA1 key and as usual in order to check it you need to go to the project overview and go down below as I showed you before and uh, one more thing you need to check is that in the Android studio you go to the AVD manager and then make sure that your emulator contain Play Store to avoid any error related to the Google sign in okay it might work without this icon but to make sure that it will be working fine and to avoid any error just make sure that this label is already found okay so let's go back to our code and now 
we can test that or before we can write the code to catch the errors and of course the code for that we can get it from the login screen so I will just copy this one and go back to the Google button and paste it here like this of course we need to import this class and do the same for this one and in here we can access the message just like this. Now I will restart the application and see if it will work. Okay, so let's go to this page, to the user screen, go to the login, press on this button, and here it is. As you can see, it shows the, the user that it's being loaded, and now if I choose this email, let's try. I got no error and everything is working fine here and I got this ID and now if I want to add something to my cart or to the wishlist it's working fine and if I go to the user screen in here it's showing the logout. Perfect so let's go to the authentication tab and the Firebase and I can see my email here and here's the ID so if I copy this go back to the terminal and try to search for it it will appear here as you can see it matches so that's it for this tutorial in the next tutorial we will implement the forget password so we will allow the user to forget his password I'll see you there